Hello everybody, Neon here, doing a video about the new uh, patch that just came out for Eternal. Uh, anybody who's been paying attention to the game closely knows that there was a patch that of course came out tonight, and given the fact that I've had a busy date on the channel, I thought, you know, why not push it all the way, you know, really buff up those numbers for the one day uh, event kind of idea, and um, going to be taking a look at the changes that happened in this patch very quickly. Um... Obviously, like I haven't had a chance to play with these these yet, so there will be some elements that I, I haven't like fully you know, experienced yet. But uh, wanted to just get a bit of a you know, first impressions out the gate of it. So first off, boar was hit. Uh, it, it now increases the cost by one for every copy that you play. Um, well, uh, first thing to note, actually, this is a campaign card. As you all know, uh, there was another campaign card that was hit too, which was, of course, Palace. Um, I think that like what it, I understood from it is that everybody who bought those campaigns are each getting 1,250 gold back, which is sick So I think uh, you know, for each one. So that, that means that I, like, for instance, I'm getting 2,500, and I think that it's just for free. You know, just whatever, just here, take 2,500. So sick. Um, boar, though, it, it now kills an attachment, and then the cost goes up by one. The big issue with boar is that it uh, really punished people who were relying on relics that had to stay in play, especially when you had, like, a number of relics that had to stay in play. Like, for instance, it doesn't really do a lot against, um, the, the, the decks that, um, like, like rats or something like that because partly like a lot of those relics that you would see in those decks uh just had an effect when they come into play like like cage itself uh had a, like you generates a 1-1 a one -one. you then pair it with things like the the hideaway which gives you a 2-1 like there's a lot of relics there that you get um value when you play them so boar wasn't great against them um boar yeah, like, and the like the the writer text of um, being able to use it multiple times wasn't particularly special against something like um, chains or or whatever because usually they just have one um, you know card out in a lot of cases. Um, now though the, the but the thing that was like struggled the most would be something like chalice decks, uh, things that have like an inter like two or three. Uh, relics out at once which are high value uh you cost three four five uh that kind of amount and um it was really oppressive at pushing those strategies out and this at least makes it a little bit harder to get just a ton of value off of it this is a, like all th things considered a relatively minor nerf usually when you are like it's pretty rare to get a lot of value off of more nowadays I mean, maybe that's just because we have uh, bore in the metagame and it's kind of like suppressing those strategies enough that you're not seeing them so i'm interested to see how this ends up playing out and whether this it, it makes a big difference in the amount of relics matter strategies because if this is if you're getting two high value relics for three costs as opposed to for two costs that's still insane like that's still really good um i guess there's also the question of like your permafrost plus something else like like that that's another element too, or multiple permafrost that could be, be an issue too so i i do think that this like, it does matter as a nerf. I don't think... I think that Boar will see play. Um, and it's just that, I guess, the... <clears throat> like, because the upside on this card is still really high. Uh, but I guess it really depends on other things that are happening as well. Uh, Incendiary Slagmite. This is a 3-1-4-2 uh, that was not very good before because it was double fire influence, and now it is single fire influence. I would, I'll, I'll describe my rating on this card as follows. This card does not see play in Mono Fire. There are multiple Mono Fire decks that people are running around with nowadays, um, some of which are very heavy in the one drops, and they don't play this card. Um, now, that might be more related to another card that we're going to get to later on in the uh, in this review. But like, if there's anything that was going to like enable that like this card it would have been a mono fire deck because also you by the nature of having only one faction in your deck you are constrained in the cards that you can play and when you are constrained in the cards that you can play and like it's a double fire card so it doesn't but it doesn't matter because you're in a mono fire deck um it kind of seems like a weird thing to say like yeah no now it's like super playable or whatever uh i find it hard to believe 
personally because uh, I mean because like the thing that I've said about this card before things have to be going kind of well already you have to attack on turn two in order to play it on turn two uh, and you have to play it in order to actually get the the value off of it um, I mean I've pl had this played against me a couple times I've never really been like super impressed by it like sometimes it does get me but um, it's not that hard to play around so this is not one that I think is going to make a huge impact in its rolling instruction it might see a little bit more play but I, if it does I I imagine that would be related to some other things that are happening in the metagame sort of around it because this is not a significant buff given the fact that mono fire was already deck and i don't think that anybody else really wants it that badly tantrum is the next card deal two damage to an enemy tantrum it has double damage and overwhelm if you have a shift unit two costs now down from three i don't I mean, four damage overwhelm is kind of interesting for two, especially given the fact that it goes face. And if you pair it with something like uh, Helling Peak Smuggler, like that's almost interesting. But you have to play a shifted unit, and I just don't think that there are that many that you actually want to play kind of honest. So this is a long shot in my mind. It seems good, like it's definitely better for um, draft. Like draft, this is you're gonna be very happy to play this now. Um, so that that's good, but uh, I don't think that it matter. I, I'd be surprised if this ends up mattering for constructed. An uh, adolescent uh, death jaw is the next one. It was, was a fun little name. For it, uh, you may put an exhausted enemy unit into the owner's hand is now a three cost shift as opposed to a two cost, uh, a four cost shift rather. Um, we actually pretty good at two, I think. But for 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 uh, three, it doesn't make it into constructed. I don't believe. Um, this is kind of like an old Praxis displacer, but you get the body a couple turns later. Cost less, though, I, I suppose. Maybe this does actually see a little bit of play in a world where Obelisk is less under the pressure of four. Um, this is this is thin. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is a particularly likely thing. Um, I'm, I'm actually, like, now that I'm thinking about it, it feels like there's a chance uh, it's, it's very thin though, so, or maybe you have to be like a mono time deck or something like that. It's probably good in, um, budget decks though. I, I, I'm probably going to put this into my next budget deck that I, I do, which is going to be a time, like, tempo-y type deck. This seems fine there. Um, but I, I I'll be shocked. I, I'll be, like, surprised impressed I, I guess a good way to put it if this actually is able to make a, a space for itself in constructed but it's not totally outside the realm of possibility that it sees like a little bit of play uh, expedition leader it is a uh, two cost as opposed to three cost now it was so terrible at three cost like i mean i saw people playing it and every single time i'm like i don't know fire favor torch it you know, just whatever. Like, the whenever you trade down in power like that right now, in the early turns of the game, you're just so far behind. And uh, this is is really bad, um, or was really bad at three. It's worth noting that this now fits into a uh, even-handed golem deck, and I haven't actually looked to see what the cost distributions look like there. Like, maybe there's an even-handed golem shift deck that, that matters. So... Um, that's interesting, uh, at the very least. Um, I mean, two cost one one, though. Like, you... You really have to get that first trigger at the... At, in order to justify this. And there's so many, um, great removal spells to take care of a card of this nature that I am not really feeling it, uh, still. I just think that the one one body is pretty disgraceful. Um, better in draft, though. Like, I think it matters more there. Uh, Amar and Stinger. This is a pretty noticeable one. I I made no secrets with the fact in the past that I did not like Amar and Stinger in its old formulation. It wasn't quite so much that it was 
so powerful, I actually kind of like still maintain that in some ways it was overrated. It just ends up being this deck, this card though, that's just like miserable to play against in some decks. If you get hit on turn three by an Amaran Stinger, like you're on the draw, they Amaran Stinger you, and you're on a fair mid rangey deck that doesn't have a lot of flyers you can just kind of lose to that because this card just randomly is like three removal spells it is so frustrating it's so annoying um and i think that part of the, one of the things that they particularly mentioned is that this shuts down aggressive decks really hard a two four body is a pain in the ass to attack through once again if your opponent's on the play there's very few fire units that can block this as a 2-4 um, without just being a jump block for it. And so just they were really frustrating. I heard, I fucking hated it. And I mean, I I know that it happened on Midian to me like so many times that it attacks me and then I instantly get hit by a double scorpion or whatever. And it's really frustrating. So I'm happy that this card is getting nerfed and now dice a torch that is obviously a magic number that I'm sure everybody noticed there that it's going down to three cost, uh, three health um, makes a big difference there. So I'm happy about that. And um, I, yeah, God, I fucking hated this card. I'm really happy to see it, see it changed. Um, even though like, it's so weird. I'm like, I don't think it was that good. It was good. It wasn't that good, but it was annoying. So I'm I, I'm happy. I'm very very happy about this one. Perilous research. Uh, there, obviously, there's no real change to, to this card. It's the next one, the the, the paired card rather, uh, and we'll take a look at that one in a moment. Zumakan the Surveyor. This is one that I don't know how I feel about in terms of how much it matters. It is a uh, it is now a seven seven as opposed to a six six, and everything else is the same. This is, card is fundamentally just like not. Very good, because it's a big ball of stats. It's now a, a reality warden, and I don't think that that m matters. Um, I guess we do have some six sixes, that, 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 like the uh, Heart of the Vault or whatever. I mean, I always joke that a um, that Praxis can never beat a 7-7, seven, seven, and that still holds. Now, especially now that they don't have the uh, as many of the deadly units, I guess that like you still have the issue of things like Daria that is a huge pain in the ass for you. Um, with it, but that's still kind of like, this is like a super niche thing. Um, I find it hard to believe that this is going to see a significantly more play because six sixes are not that much smaller than seven sevens in terms of how they match up in combat. Um, the the big issue. I guess that this thing doesn't fly. Um, if people, people are much more interested in being active on the in the air nowadays, but that could also change too. Like it, it feels actually now that I'm thinking about it, because there's there's a whole lot that's kind of going on in this this patch, and it actually has the potential to create either a similar meta game that has just some slightly different builds of the the various decks, or we see like kind of a whole. Um, dominoes effect where like this thing's worse and this thing's better enough that they swap places in uh, like a tier list uh style evaluations and then everything like there's just kind of a domino effect all the way down and uh I, so i really think that that's something that's possible and in that world like if for instance the nerfs to palace which we're going to talk about of course in the future and the nerf to singer um makes time mid-range better then Zuma can is actually good, uh, or at least playable. And um, so, so that's like one side of this to me, that I, I think that in that world, there may be a space for it, but it's not because Zuma can himself is good, as it is probably the easiest way to state it. Yeah, I don't think so on this one, but it's actually surprisingly interesting when you think about that. Because I actually think that this whole big picture element of all the other moves and changes that are taking place. Um, actually, the other thing about this too is if we do see a revitalization of traditional token stick, like we actually see uh, you know, four copies of Xenonobolis main deck a uh, style decks making a return, maybe this is a card that fits into those. Uh, decks, but um, that's probably a long shot. 
I'll leave it there then. So, uh, long shot for zooming him, but in the event that the whole metagame kind of you know, dominoes through, then maybe he sees some play under, under that situation. Because he's seen some play already. Anyway, I'll, I've spent too long on this card already. A lot of findings, though, is the other half of... Uh, what's the perilous research? Just, of course, the, the first uh, half of it. Uh, for each of your relics, draw a card and play a 3-3 Sandcrawler with Overwhelm. The difference now is, of course, that it costs... Seven, uh, I find it really hard to believe that this makes the difference for this card. Um, the bigger deal it would be Boar. Uh, the, the change with Boar being a difference. I st I, I'm actually kind of surprised people haven't worked harder on Perilous Research decks. I guess it's hard. Um, feels like there's some potential there. Um, I, I still want to work on a Perilous Research Storm deck, but, um, I don't know. This one's, this one's fascinating to me. Uh, I, I want to, I hope to be able to spend some time on this one at some point in the future. Um, uh, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday. With Strand, this has been changed to give Endurance as opposed to Aegis. Uh, this is really important when you line it up with, uh, Palace, so we're going to talk about all that all at once. But, uh... I mean, I guess this is worse for draft, probably, all things considered. Uh, Svetia's Sanctum is now six cost. Uh, this, um, actually, one thing I will mention quickly, I have not mentioned uh, yet, the, now that we're getting into some of these cards that are um, big, that have been, been nerfed, uh, that, that are important. Um, so Svetia's Sanctum, Martyr's Chains, we of course also have uh, the Vicious Highwayman. Um, one of the rules that I always say is that there is no penalty to dusting cards that get nerfed. Um, if you like the card, obviously you can keep it. Um, but if you, like Svetia Sanctum, for example, um, if you like did you dust the ones that are that are extra for for you that you can get the full value back from, um, you keep that stone in your collection for a little while. Let's say Huru Control still ends up playing Svetia Sanctum, just doesn't change. Uh, like it just ends up be not being an important nerf. Um, you can just rebuild them in a week or two and if you want to play that deck again. Um, so you, you'll just never be punished for that. Uh, it's like same goes with Murder's Change, same goes with Vicious Highwayman. Just just disenchant them, uh, have the, the stone sit in your collection for a little while, and then it, build them back again later on if that's what you want to do. So, uh, I mean, for, for even for me, who I have like a degenerate collection, uh, I've disenchanted uh, the, the legendary cards. Not that they're rares. I, I personally don't do the rares. But uh, so anyway, something to think about. And for those of you who are thinking about what to do with the Svetia Sanctums that are in your collection. Uh, and But this change is quite important for a variety of reasons. One is it disrupts the curve between Sanctum and Palace. Uh, before you could go five sanctum six palace and that was a really powerful way to take control of the game to take initiative uh with assuming that you weren't on the back foot really really powerful in the mirror specifically the fact that you now have to go six sanctum six palace like palace is a much stronger card than this so that does reward you for looking to other win conditions uh, then and it's not like Sanctum was like that much better than something like if you're playing a mid rangey version, you can play uh, Siddhiti, you could play Rost in the controlling versions. I think that he was it was definitely better than Rost before uh, after testing it out a bunch. But now I'm much less convinced. Also, uh, another point is holding up Defiance. It was a really powerful thing to do with Svetia Sanctum because it just buys you so much time and it just takes, now you have to go to seven power as opposed to six in order to go Sanctum plus the uh, Defiance. So that that is something that I am concerned that this card, it, it seems unlikely that this is just totally dead in competitive play uh it's it, at the very least this is probably a market card in some versions of huru uh control now it i 
the question I'm thinking about right now is what are the chances that this is the main win condition in the stock versions of Huru Control now? Um, I'd say slightly worse than 50-50 is my guess. If that helps you, I, it's definitely worth trying it still, but there's just, there are some really good other alternatives and you don't have to rely on, on it. So uh, the fact that it is slightly worse now means that the other versions that were slightly worse before might now be slightly better. Uh, in terms of what this, in, I think we obviously have to talk about Palace in terms of how it affects the overall um, status of the metagame uh, for, for Huru, but uh, that's just my take on Sveti Sanctum specifically. Um, and Sveti, there's been other Sveti Sanctum decks too. Like I know that people have been messing around with TJP versions of it. I've messed around with it myself. Um, those are probably still fine, actually, uh, in to, to varying degrees. Yeah, this card will definitely still seem some amount of play. It'll depend on the rest of the metagame in terms of how it stacks up, if it ends up in a Tier 1 deck or if it's like Tier 3 or higher. A lower, I guess. Who knows how these things work? Martyrs change. Go, go to nine. Uh, this is one that I think a lot of people have been talking about to varying degrees. Martyrs chains is a card that has a lot of naysayers. Has had a lot of naysayers for a while now. Um, it's really frustrating to play against if you're on a mid rangey deck because it just shuts down the, the game so hard. Uh, so I am. I'm not that sad to, to see it go. I was. Never big into the Combre Chains decks. Those are the ones that I didn't like the most because it just felt like the games were really uninteresting. Either you shit all over them or they shit all over you. That was not fun in my mind. And th so I'm, I'm definitely not sad to see this go. Was it so... This is, I think, more of a it's not fun rather than it, it's too good nerf. Uh, it, there was a time that it felt like it was a little bit oppressive but they changed enough other stuff around it like the justice merchants that it wasn't quite as bad so we'll have to see how this pans out uh over the course of the next um couple months it's probably still going to be a market card in some versions of justice control decks but uh definitely very unlikely to see significant main deck play is how i will put things Lari the Appraiser. She has been changed to a two-cost twist as opposed to a three-cost twist. I'm going to read this card again for those of you who don't remember what it does, because I don't blame you. The enemy player can attack with relic weapons or activate relics. Pay two and twist Laura to draw a relic from your uh, deck uh, with cost equal to her health. This is probably... I'm thinking about this particularly in Chalice. Because, like, she kind of brings her own Chalice. And the, the fact that you, she can't get Sanctum does matter. So, hmm, this one's fascinating. Like, this is definitely more interesting. I know that three costs was just, like, way too much. It was really expensive. And, uh, the, I mean... Card draw engines are kind of cool. This is going to be... I think that this is worth trying as a meme slash fringe deck. Uh, there's some potential here that this is a lot of card draw possibility. Uh, if you top deck this in the late game, I can kind of see this setting up just some absolutely bullshit combo, which is really cool. I would love to see that. This would obviously go in, in alarming, not obviously, I guess, but like very likely go into a alarming fighting deck. Uh, you'd have to put a lot of effort into building this properly. Uh, and I, I, it seems like a hard task to do, but I think this is probably worth it as a payoff. And there's enough high power and versatile relics around that um, it's it, it's kind of fascinating. The fact that it also goes with, by the help as opposed to by the attack is so interesting because I think this card would be so much better but in the other way because you, you would want to start with like the cheap things like you start off with Pitfall Trap and you kill a small idiot uh, and then you go up to 
like Lethrai uh, hideaway, uh, etc. And you move up the chain that way, um, as opposed to moving down the chain of starting with something like um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be sanctum anymore. I don't even know what you would play for a five. Maybe like visage. Maybe that is just bad. Um, it's, it's interesting. I would say the, at the the very least, uh, definitely much more interesting than the ones before. The three cost was just not worth considering. Bam. Four cost, three, five. When Bam attacks, you play a 1-1 one, one Yeti Spy, and three cost, transform a card of your choice in the enemy market into a 1-1 one, one Yeti Spy. This is, of course, decreasing the ca- uh, the shift cost of it, uh, going from three to fo- uh, from four to three. Uh, I mean, I, I honestly think it was kind of close before there's been successful Yeti's decks. I haven't played them myself, so I don't really know. This is obviously so insane with Womp. God. I want this to be good. I don't think it is. I, I mean, like, to be honest with myself, I, I, I don't think it, it should be. But hitting market cards for, for free like that it is kind of cool. It's just so passive as a three drop, right? And I guess that... Like, Yeti's decks don't have, like, the super impactful uh, market cards that they're worried about as much. They're kind of just worried about running out of steam more often. I have to play the Yeti's decks more to know if this is something that is even a consideration. Probably not. Uh, I'm just kind of humoring it. Elder Meditant is now a 2-2 from a 1-2. This probably matters to draft, but I don't play draft very much, so I can't really comment on it. Uh, same goes for Murderous Flock. I'll just leave those to people who actually care about draft. Go talk to Sunnyvale about that. He will be sure to let you know. Same with Crooked Alley Guy. Like, none of these cards, by the way, like the, the Crooked Alley Guy too, I should, I should say. Maybe that's... Maybe there's a shift aggro deck. I don't think that there is. I really don't think that there is. Like, going up to... Like, a one cost... Like, a one cost 3-3 three, three is just not worth that amount of work. We... It, it's less work... To do the, um, what's his name? The one one. Uh, you know that one, the 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 prospector, lucky prospector. Uh, that that is less work than this card, and that card is doesn't see a ton of play, and has never seen a ton of play. Like he's seen some, but not not a lot. And uh, I just don't think that this card is as good as that. So probably bad. Um, I didn't like the. Uh, I know people have been messing around with the 3-4 Reckless Shift 1 card, and that one hasn't impressed me either. So, um, count me down to Skeptical for it. Tazbu, the Forbidden, it is now, it, he now draws cards when he dies, not just other units die. This was a change that felt really obvious to me. Like, even when I first saw him, I'm like, he needs to draw a card from himself i actually think he's kind of interesting now um equivocate is a little bit less popular than it's been in the past it might come back now uh, obviously we've seen a lot of other changes in the metagame that um could re- relate to equivocate being better again but uh tazbu here he is he's interesting now ish Justice, like, like, I guess heavy shadow decks haven't been super where I want to be. Uh, other than the... Okay, um, I, I should take that back. Because there, there are some of them that are good. This seems interesting in a, a witching hour deck, now that I think about it. Like, or a granite and spread deck. Is that is that playable? Is that good? It's definitely better, but I don't think I don't know if it's good or not. I actually think it's worth testing now. Uh, he he is he has now moved from unplayable trash to at least like worthy of consideration. Um, that's not a high praise of it yet. I I'm skeptical of it, but I think that he's worth trying. So I, I'm happy by the way that but that Hazbu and. Zukama, uh, Zuma, Zumakan, whatever his name is, uh, both got buffs here because those were the two members of the cycle that just like were clearly out in the cold. So getting the nice, healthy boosts to each of them uh, means that they give giving some 
uh, legs to these other factions that are kind of feeling a bit dejected right now. Uh, the Vicious Highwayman is up next. 5-3 now for 5 cost. This is a really big nerf um, for a number of different reasons. Um, this is actually something that I was talking about before with like right before this like patch came out like a couple days ago with um, the members of the discord by the way sign up for the discord if you haven't already it's a lot of fun lots of informative sh shit goes on there great discussions great shit talking all over everything that you could want from a discord uh, so check that out if you haven't already the link will be in the description but the thing that i was saying with it is vicious highwayman gives uh stone scar just kind of like this free out to some of its biggest weaknesses like it's so good at just shitting all over aggro decks uh one drop heavy aggro decks which is something that they actually can struggle with and um it, it might not seem like they do but when you have both uh vara and vicious highwayman that's sitting on top of you your matchup is really bad and um well you can kind of beat like what would be a good way to put this if a, a low drop heavy fire aggro deck, um, like for instance mono fire, let's just say, um, they can, like they're okay at beating one copy of Vara or Highwayman. They're really bad at beating two copies. If they have, if you have them back to back, it's going to be really tough to win those games. And having, if you're only playing four copies of Vara and you're not playing Vicious Highwayman, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to have them back to back. So by that token, if a Stone Scar is no longer able to play Vicious Highwayman in their decks, then it actually is a huge buff to these aggro decks. And it's a, it's a much more difficult choice in my mind now for... I mean, it's always been a choice back and forth about whether or not Highwayman, you're playing Highwayman or uh, Maiden or more removal spells or something else. Uh, it's definitely been recently correct to be playing Highwayman because there's been a decent amount of aggro as well. So, uh, and the other element to, to Highwayman too is he just felt like this like, like free way to shit all over um, sites. And, and he was like one of the best ways to play against sites for... Uh, stone scar decks like you could kill something like a a, a palace just kind of for free um he was really good against harsh rule decks as well so he was actually very good at satisfying some of the various weaknesses like popping aegis that's another one too he was really good at that so he, he was a really important part of shoring up a variety of weaknesses that stone scar had and while like there were some matchups where he was really bad. Like, he did not do anything in time-based mid-range matchups a lot of the time. There were just so many situations where he would bail you out where nothing else would. So this definitely matters, uh, in, in, and it will make a difference in where uh, and how Stone's card is built. I imagine a lot of versions are still going to play at least one in the market. I don't think that there's going to be very many of them that are playing both Eclipse Dragon and Highwayman in the main deck. Uh, that'll be more of a metagame call, I believe. We'll have to see how it ends up fitting out. Like, how does this compare to Eclipse Drake? Eclipse Drake is much better in a lot of situations, I gotta say. Um, I mean, it's less attack. It does not give you lifesteal, but it has flying, guys. Flying is really good. Uh, especially right now. So... Also, of note, a couple, couple of specific things. One, I mean, still dies to Torch. That matters quite a lot. Two, it no longer works in Scream. So Haunted Highway, which had not been doing very well, it has, it has been struggling for the last um, month or so, like or since the, the most recent expansion came out. So it's been struggling, and now it's just kind of dead. Uh, and and it's, at least it's a... Like, maybe there's a way to, to reformulate it that you don't rely on Highwayman, Um I'm interested to see whether that's possible. Uh, there's obviously a lot of other powerful cards that go in there, so this seems like a good way to push on that deck and make sure that it doesn't get any better than it does. I guess, like, Defiance has already been doing a pretty good job of keeping that deck in check, but uh, there's always a risk of it kind of coming back. So, uh, and let's just talk finally about the uh, Korovyat 
palace. I will never learn how to pronounce that properly. I just will <laughs> refuse <laughs> and refuse. So when you play a unit with four attack or more, it gets Aegis and then has the rest of the same ability. So how this then, what this then means, and they talk about this a little bit in the patch notes, is that palace is sort of like on its third, like second, third, and fourth turns that it's in play ends up being more powerful because giving Aegis to units is that, that you that you're playing, especially large units that you're playing, is really fucking good. Like if you play pa pair this with something like Rost, you just have an unkillable threat now. And that that's really savage and really difficult to beat. On the flip side, it is so much harder to protect this card in the first turn that it comes into play, and which is the most important turn. The fact that you don't give Aegis to a unit that's just in play is uh, a really big deal, like a massive deal. And uh, the fact that uh, like you can still unstun whatever you have in play if that's what you want to do. So it's either something like Defiance last turn or has a Permafrost on it, it does that still. So that's good. But it doesn't give you an Aegis unit, so it makes it a lot easier to play against, especially on that first turn, which is so critical. I think that, and it also, um, this card made uh, just like a spacing like so easy. It made it really, really, um, it was so good at just being able to say like, okay, I'm going to be able to kill my opponent just like as everything else is going on, I'll just kill them. I don't have to really make choices there. Uh, now the choices become much harder because the only unit that it should have a, uh, that should have um, endurance is the one that does not have Aegis. So um, what, like, <laughs> that was, I guess, the, the part about it that made it like super crazy was that you had something with, with, um, and Aegis and Endurance, the turn that it came down, and it got massively buffed. It was just so hard to fight through that, to chew through that. There was just so many resources that you had to commit in order to do that. So that was something that was um, pretty important. And I think there's also a big reason why cards like Slay just got uh, dropped from the metagame. Like, this was a card that, as maybe it was like six months ago or something like that, I was talking about it as being one of the best cards in the game and then just kind of got dropped because it just, you know, it's not interesting anymore um, in compared to, you know, everything else that's going on. Because in Corviat Castle was a big reason for that because you just couldn't play slow removal anymore um, if you were a controlling deck. Or at least you need to have a, a critical velocity of fast removal that could actually handle something like a, um, like whatever unit that was going to hit by the, the withstand. So this is all... I putting everything together. I guess is the the the, the next thing. To talk. Like this, this is a big uh, nerf to to Palace on uh, on net. I I think. And while it is true that there are going to be some games where Palace is at, like on net actually better than it was before, that is going to be the minority of games. I would say about half the games. It is good. Twenty five percent of the games, it is going to be like significantly worse. Twenty five percent of the game, it's going to be moderately worse. Twenty five percent of the games, it's going to be um, about the same, and twenty five percent of the games, it'll be a little bit better. Is is how I would evaluate it right now. Palace was insane before, though. Like it, it was one of the best cards in the game. So it was one of the reasons that you built your deck in Huru colors, just so that you could play Palace, and uh, not. So, so going down from number one to number like five or whatever it is, isn't game ending for for Palace. Like Palace will see play still, um, and I'm just fairly curious as to what the decks will end up looking like. So there's still got to be a mid range deck in there that's worth playing. So there's still got to be a control deck that's in there that's worth playing. I don't know exactly how far down they're going to go in terms of the the tier list, as, especially given that there's a lot of other things that are moving around around it. So I'm curious, and I, I'm really excited. I'm very happy on net with all of these changes. Uh, to be to be clear, like I think uh, Stone Scar and Huru were both a little bit too good, and I think that they hit Huru a little bit harder than was needed. To, to be frank, because like there was kind of like they hit Alice like really fucking hard uh, in this one, and so I don't know if that was necessary to hit it as hard as they did. But 
I'm happy that they hit them at the very least. I'm happy that they hit Stone Scar as well. I kind of feel like they might have. It might have been good to hit them a little bit harder. The suggestion that I had with uh, um, Highwayman as the change was that he would no longer give life steal when he killed a unit or when a unit died when he was in play. And I think that I still would have liked that more. I obviously haven't played with these changes while well, the Dire Digital team had, so I. Um, we'll defer to them to a certain degree. I'm interested to see how this one ends up panning out. It still feels like Stone Scar is really good here. Um, and until people have a chance to figure out everything else that's going on, uh, the, that'll be my default. Like, if I wanted to win as much as possible today, I would play a Stone Scar deck with very few changes, other than maybe just putting one Highwayman in the market and just substituting with other good cards in the main deck. Uh, the fact that, you're, that you have... Um, Stinger getting shit on is a really big advantage, actually, to, to Stone Scar, I gotta say, because they, they did not like playing against those 1 1 deadlies, and the fact that he she dies now to Torch will make it a lot easier for you to defend yourself against that. So, um, there's a lot of thoughts on it. There's a lot of possibilities of how things could go from here. I could actually see this end up being a patch where basically the same hierarchy with some slightly different configurations, maybe one or other to. to new fringe decks pop up but that's kind of it i could see that as one possibility or i could see this ends up having this huge cascading dynamo like um yeah dynamos what are they fucking called <laughs> it's a light guys uh the ones that fall over uh dominoes <laughs> fucking brain fart out of you know, my uh of all time right there just i'm gonna leave that in too guys you gotta enjoy that my, my brain just like what are the thing i actually have to think about the pizza place in order to remind myself <laughs> it's a good moment there good moment so that i think is a good uh cue to end the the video for today thank you so much for hanging out with me and getting my first impressions on this be sure to comment decks that you want to see me try particularly if you have ones that are you see on Eternal Warcry or that you make yourself, like share those links with me. I would love to take a look at them and love to try them out um, because there's a lot of possibilities to go from here. I'm probably going to try something at least quasi-competitive going out the gates to kind of understand what things look like going forward. But I really would love to see lots of suggestions and lots of ideas going forward. So share those uh, in the comments. Of course, also subscribe, like, and share and everything. Also, I don't plug my Patreon nearly as much as I should. I would really appreciate it if you could check that out if you can and share a little bit of cash for that to support the channel if this has been something that you found valuable. But thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a really interesting to go through it. I, even over the course of my like going through the nerfs and, and changes again, I've kind of lot you're changing my mind on a few things. There's a lot of possibilities here. And we, I, I look forward to, to investigating them, but that'll be it. Thank you so much.